Angus started it and Joel continued it. So now I'm going to print my own 3D coin. And I'm going to do it in Tinkercad and print it in 80% copper filament. Watch how I do it on today's Film of Friday. Here's my coin design that I came up with in Tinkercad. It's got fingers around the side, it's concave on top, and it's got my logo, Chuck Hellebuck's Electronic Products, CHEP. So I'll just make another one, that way you can see how I did it. So I brought in a cylinder with the ruler tool so I can manually adjust the size. And I made it 75 millimeters by 75 millimeters. So that's a pretty big coin, it'll fit in the palm of my hand. And then I made it 8 millimeters thick, which I will later on adjust, make it a little thicker. But for right now, let's leave it. And then I need to bring in the logo, which is an SVG file. So let's go to my computer, find the CHEP SVG file, import that in, but it, now it's huge. So I need to resize this. So I grabbed the corner and held down the shift key, and that way everything moves equally in proportion. And then I positioned it where I wanted, kind of just to work on it, and then brought it up and made it into a hole, because now I want to put this on top of the disc. Once I got it there and sized properly, now I needed to align it centered to the coin. So I aligned in the X and the Y direction, and now it was centered. But I needed to lift it up uh, two millimeters, because I didn't want my coin to have the letters go all the way through. I wanted a surface in the back, and you'll see why as I go deeper. So I grouped those together, and then I had the basic starting point in my coin. So this looked pretty good. So the next step was put the fingers on the side, and I did this again with a cylinder that I sized to 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters, and then I just dropped it down a little bit so it would go below the surface, because I'm going to use this as a hole to take away material. So once I had that set up, I just slid it into the coin and just went far enough in to where I got the look I wanted. And this took a little bit of adjustment, but once I had it, then I just hit edit duplicate and then slid another one across and I just held the shift key as I came across so that way I know they're directly in line and then I positioned that one to about the same I just eyeballed it to about the same and then I grouped them together and then that allows me to center these guys and duplicate them so once I duplicated them they're a set I could take the duplicate and move it to 30 degrees and once I got it to 30 degrees, then I could just go edit, duplicate, edit, duplicate, all the way around this thing. And then every 30 degrees, I got a set of notches. So that makes it easy in Tinkercad. So once I've grouped, got all those, I grouped them together. And now I've got the fingers on the coin. But I need to put the chamfer's edges in. So how did I do that? Because Tinkercad doesn't really have that feature. So I brought in a cone, I duplicated it, and then I used the mirror tool to put one on top of each other. So now it's like an hourglass. And then I grouped those together and made them into a hole. And now I'm basically going to do the same thing I did with the cylinder. I'm just going to slide it in into the coin. But I need to put these on the same level. I want them both centered. So I used the align tool and centered them so that popped the coin up in the air. So now when I brought this hourglass in I could basically take material away from the top and the bottom but leave the center alone so all I had to do was just kind of position this and again I'm just eyeballing it to try to make things even and once I had that set now I was ready to do the same thing as I did before duplicate it slide the other one off to the opposite side uh, position that one in a similar way and once I had that position, I could group these two together. And then I do the same thing. Every uh, 30 degrees, I slide it into position and just went all the way around the coin. So I won't go through all the steps again. Um, I just did edit, duplicate, edit, duplicate until I had it all the way around the coin. And then I just grouped those guys together. And now I had the edges that I wanted nice and angled. So now I needed to make the top concave. And so to do that, I brought the plane, the work plane, on the top surface. And then I brought in a half sphere. And then I flipped this 180 degrees. And now I wanted to resize this and make it much bigger. So I brought in the ruler tool so I could do this somewhat accurately, although the numbers don't matter that much. 
but I made it 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters so this stretched it out and then I needed to position this over the top of the coin now I'm gonna center this but first I want to make this a hole so I can see what I'm doing because this is gonna take away material so I use the align tool to center these guys in the X and Y direction I use this align tool all the time and once I had those two centered then I grabbed the half uh, sphere and dropped it down into the coin and this I just again eyeballed it to where I thought it was a good position where I was just outside the Chep logo grouped it all together and I had my concave top and that pretty much was the coin now I couldn't help but look at this and not think of it as like a bottle cap so I decided to add a feature to it I made it a little bit thicker and then I brought in a bottle cap uh, hole. I found this on Thingiverse and I made it. Um, so I, I brought it into the center of this guy, grouped them together, and now I had my coin, but would be practical because you know when I would do 3D prints, I want them more practical rather than just trinkets. So once I had that here, I'll flip it over and you can see now I had an opening in the back to where now I could use this as a bottle opener. Just pop it over the bottle and twist it off. So that was it. So now I just needed to download this and as an STL file and send it to my printer. Filamentive sent me this sample copper filament. It's 80% copper. So I decided to use this. So I brought the design into Simplify 3D. But because of that bottle cap opening there, I needed to add supports. And I wanted to control it. So I used the Customize Support tool in Simplify 3D and I only want them from the build platform up so then I said generate automatic supports and once it did that it put supports in places that I really didn't want like you could see it was going into the material and I was afraid this may be too hard to break away and you just don't need filament there or supports there so I clicked on the remove existing supports and then I just went to work just clicking away taking away the supports I don't want and this is what I ended up with and this looked really good. Filamentive supplied me with instructions on how to print and their instructions said use a 90% infill and 0.15 layer height. So that's what I did. I went into my process settings and I'm printing this on my Monoprice Select Mini. So I'm gonna set this to uh, PLA and then medium but I'm gonna adjust that but 90% fill is what I'm going to use per their instructions. I have to check the generate support and I'm also including a raft. And then under layer here I used a 0.15 layer height. Now I wanted more top and bottom layers so I set this to 5 and then outline perimeter shells. I wanted that to be solid because I'm going to be buffing this thing. In fact let's just make it 6 across the board. Um, I'm going to use a raft like I mentioned and then we're going to infill what I, the 90% which is on the, the slider and then generate supports and temperature wise let's raise the the bed temperature here a little bit and then extruder I'm going to use 205 which is typically what I use with PLA on this machine I enabled cooling as typical and that's basically it so then it was ready to prepare to print and here's the design and I like to drop this down just to make sure I'm not seeing any holes or gaps but everything looked good so time lapse now this filament stuck to this KR net bed like you would not believe it was so hard to get it off I've printed other PLA and it doesn't stick anywhere near like this but it peels off nicely when you remove the raft it just literally peels right off and the center support material oh was even easier you just kind of wiggle it and squeeze it and it just pulls right off so from that point of view it was really good but uh just i gotta have to scrape the bed to clean it off uh, overall the bottom looked great the sides looked great but the top was rough just really rough so that was disappointing, but I'm going to finish it off anyway. 
So I took it over to my bench and the instructions said to use a brush on the top of it. So I just got a brass brush that I used to uh, clean hot ends and just flaked off all the rough stuff. Instructions said to use a 600 grit sandpaper and sand it smooth. I only had 220 grit sandpaper so that's what I used but it seemed to work pretty well. I could see it smoothing out as I did this. Then it says use a polishing compound so I had this gray polishing compound which said it is for copper. Put a little bit on my buffing wheel and then I just went to town on this thing just buffing it all sides all edges and look at this it looks like copper it's unbelievable how good this looked and I didn't spend a lot of time maybe 20 minutes buffing this thing I'm sure I could even do more if I took more time I was really impressed with this and it's heavy look at this 2.9 ounces or 85 grams let me show you a close-up here's a close-up of it all buffed out I mean this thing looks like it was cast in copper not 3d printed and the edges rounded on the letters it just to me it looked awesome I was really happy with the way this turned out so this is really excellent filament so this turned out really well I'm impressed with this filament of 80 percent copper filament this thing buffed up beautifully and you can't tell that this is a 3d print it's heavy it looks like copper it looks like it was cast in copper not 3d printed so this is amazing stuff i'm really happy with it if you like this episode give it a thumbs up if you like what i'm doing here please subscribe it helps the channel grow if you want to help support the channel a dollar a month to a link up here somewhere it really goes a long way and keeps this channel going if you want to pick up some of this filament filamenta is giving a 15 percent discount to all my viewers just enter the code it should be down here chuck 15 enter that at checkout and you'll save on the filament but now the big question did it work as a bottle opener let's find out it slips it slips on the cap I guess I'll have to resize it and maybe even make it a little bit thicker so I guess I'll have to use the old-fashioned method to open this have a good weekend See you next time on Filament Friday.